So now that we've made our syllabus model, let's seed it, let's fill in some data. And I'm just real briefly going to show you how to do that. And we're going to copy the, the schema model down so I can try and explain to you how to make this into a JSON, uh, how to populate this with JSON information. Um, and we'll get into the CJS here. And as you'll see, I already populated some data here. The lines that I filled in is this line right here because I need to, of course, reference the right model. We talked about that earlier. And then I added this uh, line right here to say, I wanna start out every time my server restarts, I wanna find all the syllabus and remove them. And when that is done, then I wanna create two basic syllabuses from scratch. What this means is I always know whenever my server restarts exactly what's inside the database. But it also means that every time you change something and restart your server, what you changed is gone in the syllabus, just so that you know uh, that every time you restart your server, your backend side, this will be set back. Okay, that's important information. Good. So what do we know here? Well, I wanna create asynchly a syllabus and actually here I'm creating two syllabus so if I scroll down this is the one this is the other if I just mark this guy so those are the two syllabuses that I'm going to create if I scroll even further I actually added a few lines of code to the user I predefined some IDs I'll get back to that but that's pretty much because I need to know exactly what ID my user has because I want to reference him from the um, syllabus the problem is that if i just let mongoose or mongo database auto create these ids i wouldn't know what they are they could be anything because they're randomly generated whenever the user is created so i'll paste this line in right here to kind of force it into having this specific id every time the database is seeded so those two lines are added as well then the ids really doesn't matter as long as they'll match the owner ids we'll point out in a second so let me uh, go back and let me just try to show you the actual model up here. Now, I'll, some of them I'll jump over pretty quickly because they're a lot alike. And then we'll dive into some of the important ones. So I'll just paste in the model here. Now, the strings, we have a lot. Um, so let me just remove the number for a second here and just move that down and just talk about all the different string ones at, at just with one stroke. Um, we have academy, title, education, lecturer, uh, objectives, and icon URL. They're all strings, meaning that I need to put in a string here or I will actually get an error. So if I decided that this would not be a string, this would be a number, I would actually get an error in, in the seeding. Okay, so it has to be a string that I put in these areas. Besides that, it's pretty basic. I'm saying on the top layer of my model, I need an academy. I can choose to add an academy, a title, da 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 da. So all of these are fairly simple to add. So let's just remove them. Now, here's one that's a bit more complex. The owner of this course. The idea of, is, of course, that this guy will be able to lock in and change the course where others won't be able to do that. That's the goal, of course. So my owner here, he has a reference to a user. Now, this is actually a relation. So we're kind of making a document database with a relation kind of the best of both worlds so we can actually do relations to other databases but we can also just focus on making documents that are nested now this is slowing down my system i know that but it makes it easier for me to contain the users in their own documents and that's why i'm doing it so i'm referencing one of the users down here and if you look at the id here you'll see that it actually matches this id right here so i'm referencing the admin he'll be the role now we need to do some more magic inside uh, mongoose and inside my uh, endpoint to make this actually populate the username etc etc we'll get back to that later but right now you just have to understand that this just means i'm referencing the user down there now the next one that we have is a number and that's a year so it just needs to be a number some kind of um, digit or, or number of any kind it can't be a string so that's the number one and we added it here with the year so now we have a nested elements of weak plans that means that inside a weak plan there's actually sorry inside the syllabus there's actually a property that's actually <laughs> an array 
of week plans. And each week plan is actually another object of its own. It's a nested document. And that one has um, some other um, very basic properties, a week, a number, uh, sorry, summary, topics, literature, videos. So all of this is very, very simple to put in there. Um, so we don't want to run over that. But what you can notice here is that this is kind of the blueprint on how to do it. Where down here, when we're actually seeding the database, we can add as many as we want. This is week one, or sorry, week four and week five. I could keep on going, adding more weeks. And what you can also see is it's pretty much just a list of strings down here I'm adding and a single number up here. So that's how we seed using the JSON code. There we go. Um, let's just save this and make sure that uh, our Grundy font is a happy font, duty me dude. And um, let's see if Grundy is still running. It should say something about finished populating syllabuses. So everything seems to be running as I expected. Next, we'll try and use Postman to pull out data and save data and, and figure out what actually works and what we still need to work on. See you next time.